This is Matthew, a little green fi Oh, that's not him. Well, where is he? Oh, now I see him. Wait, are you sure that's a fish? Matthew is a batfish in the family Ogcephalidae. He's a bit of a rebel. Certainly doesn't care what you expect a fish to be. Matthew is highly adapted for a benthic lifestyle, meaning that he lives on the floor of the sea, not on the roof like a duck do. From ta- oh, there he is. That's his face. From time to time, Matthew likes to take a little stroll. Underneath, he has two pelvic fins that prop him up. On the sides, highly modified pectoral fins have evolved to almost resemble little legs or arms. Used together that What the heck was that? Go back, I want to see it again. Wait for it. Oh! <laughs> that makes me want to vomit. <laughs> and put my finger in it. <laughs> Two feelings, same time. What may look like a literal interpretation of the word armpit is actually Matthew's gill. His skin is covered in little cones and pyramids. These tubercles and bucklers are specialized scales made of keratin and calcium. They form a kind of flexible armor, kind of like if you bedazzled yourself with bits of fingernail and teeth. Little frilly hair-like clusters of skin called dermal cirri poke out here and there. All of this helps Matthew disguise himself as a harmless piece of sea garbage <laughs> that can walk. It's not perfect. Oncocephalidae are in the order Lophiaformis, which makes Matthew an anglerfish and an ambush hunter. He has a little fishing pole that... <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's crazy. This Elysium... Whoa! This Elysium has evolved from a single ray of his dorsal fin, and it pops out right around where you'd think his nose would be. Like the movie Alien, but a different orifice. Most anglerfish, like this frogfish, lure their prey visually, using movement or light. Batfish, however, eat things that don't see very well, like worms and snails and stupid clams. Slurp? So a visual lure would be a bit like waving a cape at a blindfolded bull. Instead, it seems to use a chemical lure, releasing fluids from its esca, that little bulb on the end of its elysium. That fluid seems to attract things like snails and brings them to the surface. However, if you eat shelled things, you have to make sure that your mouth isn't too big for your rectum. Batfish will often get a bit stopped up. It's a delicate balance. You have a mouth the same size as your rectum and you're eating out of a straw. Too big and you've got a log jam. Batfish aren't the best swimmers. It looks a bit like if your arms were tied to your side and you were thrown off a bridge. <laughs> but you could still kind of flap your hands. However, when they spawn, they will swim up and release a little mucus raft for their babies. There are nearly 70 known species of batfish, and most look a bit like the bottom half of a kangaroo that was flattened by a truck. However, you may have also noticed that they all look very pissed off. You try putting on your lipstick with no mirror and no hands. <laughs> Even little Wendy's pissed off. She weighed herself on the bathroom scale, then had a good toilet and weighed herself again. No change, how does that even happen? But the main reason that batfish are pissed off is because they're called batfish. They've spent a long time trying not to look like anything you'd recognize, let alone a bat. Why don't you just call a bat a fish bird? That's what they say. And what makes matters worse is there's other fish called batfish too. Here's one, Platax pinatus, also called a batfish. All right, when they're juveniles, I kind of see it. But really, what they're trying to look like is the flatworm Pseudobiceras hancocinus, and no, I'm not gonna slow that word down so you can spell it, perv. In any case, they're trying to resemble not a bat, but a flatworm that does something that even researchers refer to as penis fencing, not kidding. Platax orbicularis, also called a batfish, tries to resemble a dead leaf when it's a baby. And when they grow up, you know what they do. They follow turtles around and eat the little dancing ballerinas that come out the backside. You know, the turtles. Again, not kidding. Meanwhile, the bats are like, I don't want that fish named after me, and the turtles have a lot of explaining to do when they show up at a party. Oh, hey, Jim, I see you brought a friend. No, he's not really my friend. Nonsense, I see you guys panning around all the time. What's your name, son? Mm, sorry, one shock. <coughs> Chewing. There is one fish sometimes called a batfish that might deserve the name. Dactylopterus volitans is related to the seahorse but often gets lumped in with the sea robins because they fight crime together, duh. The sea robins are called gurnards. Think Bernard but not as chilly and a little more mad. And that's a good team right there. The batfish swoops in and the sea robin can handle all the tickling. <laughs>
And that's my point, I think. You want a good partner in crime. Someone who can handle the tickling or swim up and fart out a mucus raft with you. If you're just following someone around and eating their crap all day, you get out of that relationship. You're better than that. And scientists, you need to stop getting drunk when you name fish. Awesome.